on World News Tonight. Special Session Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government calls for a five-day special parliament session. Crashed Scores killed in a plane crash amid bad weather in Brazil's Amazon rainforest. Back home North Korean President Kim Jong-un flies back to North Korea after a six-day trip. And Graffiti Glam a graffiti on a street in Sao Paulo offers a unique tactile experience for the visually impaired. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. We have a number of expansive coverages lined up for you tonight, starting off with neighboring India. The five-day special session of Parliament is all set to begin, during which the Legislative Houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha will move to the new Parliament building in a historic moment for India. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has paid tribute to the country's British-era Parliament ahead of a move to a new building. He was speaking at the beginning of a five-day special Parliament session that has been called by his government. The session will shift to the new building after an event to commemorate Parliament's legacy. According to the government, eight bills have been listed for discussion during the session. This agenda could be changed or expanded during the course of the week. But opposition leaders have questioned whether a special session was necessary to discuss these bills when members of Parliament are set to meet later this year for the winter session of Parliament. Indian lawmakers usually meet for regular business thrice a year in Parliament, for a budget session, a monsoon session and a winter session. Ahead of the special session, Mr Modi had said that its duration may be short but that it would include historic decisions. This will be the first session to be held in India's new Parliament, which Mr Modi inaugurated in May amid a boycott by opposition leaders. The announcement for the session last month had sparked criticism from opposition leaders who questioned the government's secrecy over the agenda. It also sparked intense speculation with some comments commentators stating that the government might call early elections or even change the country's name from India to Bharat. But the Indian government has not confirmed any of these allegations. Meanwhile, tragedy struck the Amazon after a plane carrying tourists crashed in the rainforest. In the Brazilian Amazon, 14 people have been killed in a plane crash in Barcelos province. The small private passenger aircraft had taken off from Manaus and was trying to land in Barcelos town amid rainy conditions. The plane had run out of the landing strip and crashed. Media reports showed the white jet belly down on a dirt track. Its front end crumpled into dense vegetations. According to Amazon State Governor Wilson Lima, the victims were tourists. Twelve of those killed were passengers and two were crew members. All of the victims were identified to be Brazilian. The Amazon region is currently facing heavy rainfall and the most likely cause of the accident is believed to be an error in the route taken at the time of landing. The plane's operator Manaus Aero Taxi said that both aircraft and crew had met all safety requirements. Local authorities and the Brazilian Air Force have launched an investigation into the cause of the crash. And now an update on the Libyan floods. People whose homes were swept away by flooding in Libya's Derna face a fresh dilemma. A dilemma of whether to stay despite a lack of fresh water or flee through areas where landmines have been displaced by the torrents. Survivors whose houses were swept away by the devastating flood in Libya's city Derna have a hard choice to make. Stay despite a lack of fresh water or flee through areas where landmines have been displaced by the torrents. This Derna resident, Hamad Awad, sat on a blanket on an empty street with a bottle of water and bedding alongside him. He said he is staying to clean up the area. Another resident, Wasfi, said people were at a loss over what to do next. Thousands of people are feared to have died after two dams above Derna broke on September the 10th, obliterating residential blocks while people slept. Many bodies were washed out to sea and more than 1,000 have already been buried in mass graves, according to the United Nations. A week on, Libyan rescue volunteers confront the devastation, describing the scene as tragic. Entire districts of Derna with an estimated population of at least 120,000, were swept away or buried in mud. State media said on Sunday at least 891 buildings had been destroyed in the city, whose mayor has said 20,000 people may have died. On Saturday, the UN Libya envoy visited the flood-stricken Derna, where he checked up on field operations and met the head of the Eastern-based administration. 
A report by the UN's Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said Libyan authorities had detected at least 55 children poisoned from drinking polluted water in Derna, where the homeless were surviving in makeshift shelters, schools or packed into the houses of relatives or friends. It said floodwaters had shifted landmines and other ordnance left over from years of conflict, posing an extra risk to the thousands of displaced people on the move. Meanwhile, in Australia, bushfires are threatening the lives of people in two Queensland towns as emergency warnings are issued by authorities. Residents in parts of Biroa on the Sunshine Coast and Emerald in central Queensland have been told to leave their homes immediately as it will soon be too dangerous to drive. From the air, you can see the smoke, the fire, bushland ablaze in Biwa. Residents told to get out and stay out. Taking in the heat, 30 firefighters bringing in trucks and water bombing aircraft, doing everything they can to get the situation under control. We could have fuel elevated from half a metre to a metre, given pine trees close together, so a bit of inaccessible for our trucks to get into. We're basically letting it come out to us. Issuing this warning to residents, those on Mawson's Road and Holt Road leave immediately. We believe we'll be able to hold that fire before it gets to those homes. This patch in the Sunshine Coast, not the only area of concern today. Northwest in the Central Highlands near Emerald, another leave now notice issued by emergency services. Residents told to leave properties along Selma Road and the Fairburn State Forest. Crews are, are doing their best to, to mop that up with the assistance of two water bombing aircraft. A bushfire battle on two fronts tonight that could be a small taste of what's to come emergency services anticipating a busy season ahead. We've got a, a difficult week ahead, perhaps next Thursday uh, will be difficult. We, we urge everyone to be as prepared as they possibly can be. Over in the US now, former President Trump says he has not given much thought to who he would choose as his running mate in 2024. But if he secures the GOP nomination, he likes the concept of his vice president being a woman. The former president Donald Trump said in an interview that he is open to picking a female running mate for the 2024 presidential election. He said that he liked the concept of a female running mate and he was aiming to pick the best person. Trump also said that he hadn't given it much thought yet and stated that he didn't think it was time yet and that he also wished to win. Trump was then floated the possibility of South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem who recently endorsed Trump while appearing alongside him at a fundraiser in her home state as a running mate candidate. Trump then called her fantastic and said that she was someone he would consider choosing. Nikki Haley, one of Trump's many primary contenders, is also among the potential candidates. Haley previously served as governor of South Carolina and then as ambassador to the United Nations after being nominated by Trump. Some of the male presidential candidates are also seen as potential pick. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy has gone so far in his support for the former president as to pledge to pardon him if elected. Trump has expressed openness to having Ramaswamy as his running mate, but Ramaswamy has said he has no interest in the number two spot. In addition, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott's refusal to attack Trump suggests that he could be keeping his options open for an invitation to the Trump 2024 ticket. Trump and his former Vice President Mike Pence have recently stepped up attacks on each other on the campaign trail, effectively ruling him out of the 2024 sweepstakes. Welcome back. Now, over in Italy, European Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen has pledged action to help the country's crisis-hit island of Lampedusa after the island was left struggling to cope with an influx of migrants. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney travelled to the Sicilian island of Lampedusa on Sunday. The island is struggling with a surge in migrant arrivals. <laughs> Nearly 126,000 migrants have arrived in Italy so far this year, almost double the figure by the same date in 2022. Lampedusa has recently seen a sharp rise in the number of people arriving by boat, with more than 7,000 landing this week. That's more than the island's permanent population. 
von der Leyen set out a 10-point action plan to relieve pressure on Italy, where most migrants arrive from North Africa's shores by boat. And therefore, I want to conclude by saying I came here to say to all of you, again, migration is a European challenge and it needs a European answer and solution. It is concrete actions that will bring change on the ground. It is only through solidarity and unity that we can achieve this. And you can count on the European Union. The plan includes using the EU's external borders agency Frontex to identify migrants in Italy and repatriate those not eligible for asylum. Von der Leyen added that she had already spoken to several EU leaders about the plan and she was confident of their support. The EU chief's visit to Lampedusa came just a day after dozens of locals protested against a plan to build new tent camps to host migrants. This protester said Lampedusa can no longer take it. The surge in migrant crossings is a major political headache for Maloney, who took office in October last year and has made fighting illegal immigration a cornerstone of her rise to power. She reiterated on Sunday that the right approach is to prevent people leaving for Europe, not redistributing migrants around the bloc. On Monday, her cabinet will meet to approve tough measures, including building new detention and repatriation centers and extending the maximum time migrants can be held for. A startling admission from the former President Donald Trump as he refused or avoided answering many specific questions about his conduct on the 6th of January, but maintained that it was his decision to challenge the 2020 election, the manner of which is now at the center of two of the four indictments he faces. In the face of mounting legal challenges, former President Donald Trump tonight with a rambling defense, seeming to admit he did lose the 2020 election while doubling down on false conspiracy theories and saying ultimately it was his decision to keep lying about the results to the American people. It was my decision. But I listened to some people. Some people said that. In his first network television interview since being indicted on charges that he illegally tried to subvert the election and stay in power, the former president asked on the press why he didn't listen to his top lawyers who told him he'd lost the election. Because I didn't respect them. Uh, You'd hired lawyers. Them. In the interview, the former president admitting that when his own advisors concluded he lost, he sought counsel from others and found people willing to help him stay in office. The special counsel Jack Smith's case rests largely on the idea that Trump knew he lost. Trump has repeatedly insisted he's done nothing wrong. Meanwhile, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is on his way home from Russia, ending a six-day trip that sparked global concerns about a possible arms deal. Pyongyang state media touts that the trip will open a new chapter in their bilateral relations, where Russia also hints at expanding cooperation despite sanctions. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has headed home after wrapping up a six-day-long trip to Russia. The North state media said on Monday that Kim successfully completed his trip and left Vladivostok on Sunday. It added that the visit will open up a, quote, new chapter in their bilateral relations. Amid signs of the two isolated countries strengthening military cooperation, the international community has voiced criticism that any arms deal between North Korea and Russia would be a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Regarding the matter, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said Moscow wants to develop, quote, equal and fair cooperation with North Korea, despite sanctions imposed on the regime by the UN Security Council. During an interview with Russia state media on Sunday local time, he said it was the UN Security Council that imposed sanctions on North Korea, not Russia. This comes after the Kremlin earlier said it abides by UN sanctions, but that it has a right to develop relations with its neighbors, including in relation to sensitive topics. Kim Jong-un's trip to Russia was his longest foreign trip since he took power in 2011. He arrived in Russia last Tuesday and had a five-hour meeting with Putin the next day. He then went on a tour of Russia's Far East, visiting key military facilities and inspecting weapons like nuclear-capable strategic bombers, hypersonic missiles and warplanes, before leaving on Sunday. An expert told that Kim would want to gain technology to make leaps and bounds for not only his spy satellite program, but also for missiles. 
But he, he would likely want more military technology from Russia to continue to augment and refine North Korea's capabilities. Uh, and his visit was a, really a, a buffet line of military-related facilities in Russia uh, that he may want to gain technology from. In the past four months, North Korea failed to launch a spy satellite twice and has earlier said that it will make a third attempt in October. South Korean and U.S. officials have been concerned about North Korea supplying artillery and weapons to Russia in exchange for satellite launch technology. And now we have some good news for you. A new cancer drug is hoping to make a world of difference for young children being treated with childhood cancer. Let's take a look. It's not hard to get a smile out of little Harry Dempsey, but it's been tough going at times. He was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma when he was just five years old. We went underwent a few months of a chemotherapy regime over at the children's hospital. The fight hasn't just been a personal one. Harry taking part in a childhood cancer research project to help other children get the best out of their treatment. So one of the first things that happens when a child is diagnosed with cancer is that they need to have a central line inserted so we can give them their treatment. While it's easier to keep the catheter in place between treatments, this can lead to infections and blood clots. Now, University of Queensland researchers are trialling a new solution to clean the device when not in use. The catheter itself is just a hollow tube so it can easily get blocked. So the administration of this new medication, TDTA, hopefully will prevent the frequency of infections, blood clots and occlusions of that device. The trial is ongoing across southeast Queensland with the next step to give every child diagnosed with cancer in Australia and New Zealand the opportunity to participate. I really was happy for Harry to be involved in anything that was going to um, improve um, his experience as well. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Comedian and actor Russell Brand has denied any criminal wrongdoing as British media reported that four women had accused him of sexual assaults, including rape, during a seven-year period when he was at the height of his fame. Senior Chinese and U.S. officials held multiple rounds of meetings in Malta, agreeing to maintain high-level exchanges and hold consultations on Asia-Pacific issues, maritime affairs, as well as foreign policies. Bulgaria's defense minister said it had sent a special unit to inspect and deactivate a drone carrying explosives, which was found in the Black Sea town of Turinovo. Europe has been battered by extreme weather over recent months, including torrential rains and deadly heat waves, and the French countryside showed a small tornado swelling near a road. Turkey's communications director said President Tayyip Erdogan asked Tesla CEO Elon Musk to build a Tesla factory in the country a day after the two met in New York. And that is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We are leaving you tonight in Brazil, where a graffiti on a street in Sao Paulo offers a unique tactile experience for the visually impaired. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.